FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. The other day we went over the top 10 most underreported stories for 2010 over at BigJournalism.com. And topping that entire list was the Pigford case. And this is a super important case. It's going to be bubbling up in in this year. I keep wanting to say 2011, like it's still next year. It's going to bubble up even more this year because there's going to be hearings. It's unbelievably corrupt. It's one of the most corrupt things that's happened in our generation. And man about the media and my boss, Andrew Breitbart, has been following this and has really, along with Representative Steve King, led the charge in uncovering the truth as to what is going on in this story. And if you go to biggovernment.com, Right up at the top there is the Pigford Investigation Resources. Anything that you have ever wanted to know about this case is up there. And Andrew joins us uh, by phone right now to give us a little update as to what's going on now and maybe a hint of what we can expect in this new year. Andrew, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dana. The big problem, though, is I can't talk about Pigford before I talk about one of the emerging scandals of 2011, and that is Media Matters Senior Fellows affections have drawn towards you and away from me over the last week and I, I'm, I'm beside myself you and eric bullard are like you're like the the mary madeline james carville of of media and so i was really heartbroken to see that you've broken up apparently well he's he right now he figures that you're you're the best target so you must be doing something right that team podesta and george soros uh george soros's money has figured that you're now a great threat to the institutional left. Well, I'm, I'm happy to uh, have worked with you in helping to create some jobs in this economy because apparently somebody has to, you know, somebody's well, got to do it. <laughs> hopefully there's a lot more senior fellows than Unterstutte is not getting there, not getting paid. <laughs> I love the Senior Fellow Society. Will you let me know when, when satin jackets are made? Well, look, if you can become a senior fellow at a think tank for watching Channel 360 on Direct TV, wow, I, what, what type of uh, degrees I could get for the, my cartoon watching of my youth. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, yeah, so the Pigford, all of this Pigford stuff, this is – I have been absolutely riveted. We, there, at least Stranahan, who's writing for big government, and we've cross-posted a lot of this stuff at Big Journalism, has been traveling southern United States, talking to a lot of these the original black farmers that filed suit for Pigford. Everyone listening is, is incredibly familiar. For those not, just go to biggovernment.com because the link is right up there about this whole story. Uh, and talking to a lot of the attorneys in this case, this is – the I, I knew it was corrupt, Andrew, but – after reading what I've read, I, in a million years, would have never imagined that it was this bad. And it's way worse than we've even let on on, on the site. Um, quite intentionally, we're going down the acorn route and serializing the story yeah. uh, bit by bit. We've laid out uh, a fail, you know, proof uh uh, narrative of the fraud here. You know, my guess, if I had to put money on it, is that it's well above 90%, you know, maybe 95% fraud. I believe that maybe there were about 157 farmers that lead uh, attorney Al Pyrus, class lead attorney, had about 157 clients, and he was exhausted running around the South trying to find uh, farmers who had loans with the USDA or had paperwork who could make a case that they were being discriminated against. We don't argue that the USDA was discriminating. In fact, when we get deeper into the case, you'll see that uh, the USDA is a rancid organization that basically terrorizes small farmers, black and white, and that the black farmers were at the front of the line to get that treatment. So I'm beyond sympathetic to the plight of the black farmers who were forced into foreclosure and to lose their way of life. And it's, it's it's a, a terrible, terrible story uh, because I've been able to talk to these black farmers who were discriminated against. But what happened was is that the class action lawyer, Al Pires, and all the other class action lawyer guys realized there was no money in, land, in the land loss issue of trying to get these guys uh, restitution and to get their lands back and to get their loans uh, you know, forgiven. Uh, these guys figured out how to get rich, and it became about the class action attorneys working with the the politicians who figured out how to turn a case that could not have been more 
than two to three thousand claimants, according to proponents of a settlement. You know, I mean, you would imagine when uh, the Black Farmers Association, who were behind Pigford, mm-hmm. when they said uh, when the settlement first happened back in 1999 that they suspected that there would be two to three thousand uh, possible claimants when all was said and done. And when in a country of 18,000 black farmers, uh, years later, there were already 22,000 claims, 4,000 claims over the amount of black farmers in the country, and well, well over the 3,300, I believe, actual paper trails that you could find of black farmers having any relationship with the USDA. At that point, people should have been suspicious uh, that, there, that this was massive fraud. Uh, it gets beyond interesting when you start realizing that one junior senator from Illinois uh, was pitched by the Black Farmers Association that he could have some help in his uh, quest for uh, the presidency, specifically in the rural South, where specifically in South Carolina he was in a dead heat uh, uh, just in, with the African Americans against Hillary Clinton, and he was down many points. And when they came to Barack Obama, he didn't just say that he was going to be supportive of legislation to extend the statute of, uh, of limitations of Pigford, but he got really deep in the weeds. We have a letter of him intimidating a witness within the government who warned that, the, that if there was a, an extension of the statute of limitations, taking the number of claimants from 22,000 to 94,000 claims, that it would be a disaster for the Farm Service Agency for, which, for whom this employee worked. Barack Obama, on his own letterhead, sent a letter to the head of the Department of Agriculture asking that she be reprimanded uh, or, or put in, 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 a, in a retraining program, basically an education camp. Right. And to me, it was an act of intimidation of a person who was telling her fellow employees, what we're now telling the crowd, right. is that taking it from 22,000 to 94,000 really strains credulity in a country where there were only 18,000 black farmers. And what we've been able to find, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the class action attorneys at the last second, in conjunction with the Justice Department, created a class called the Attempted to Farmer, oh which gosh. required absolutely no evidence All a person had to say is that they went to a farm service agency office, asked for loan papers, they didn't give it to them, and they'd get their 50,000 and a crime wave, uh, a massive crime wave of epic proportions swept the rural south where people were told that they could get their backdoor reparations. And the reason why the scandal will break open is because the class action attorneys and the politicians who are running around saying that the black farmers have been given their justice, were not given their justice, and I'm talking to them, uh, and each and every one tells you the exact same, tells me the same story you just heard here, that this was backdoor reparations, uh, that this was about the attempted to farmer, and the actual black farmer who lost his land never got his land back and was treated uh, just as shabbily as, as he was treated by the USDA in the first place, and that this was a pay-to-play, get-out-the-vote scheme by the Democratic Party uh, to get uh, the rural black vote in the South. It's a double offense is what it ended up being. That's It's shocking to me that it can go, it, it's just gone this far. And you've done such amazing work, and it's it's up at biggovernment.com right now, the Pigford Investigation Resources. And I know we're going to talk to you more because Daryl Issa, he's, he's gunning to do some investigations, so I know we're going to be talking more about this. And uh, this is all, uh, how do you anticipate this is going to come out when they actually start doing public hearings on this? Well, let me, let me entice your audience a little bit more because I think this is so much bigger than ACORN. Uh, I, I'm obsessed with this because we are going to be able to show you FBI affidavits of a co-worker of a person who worked in Arkansas at the Farm Service Agency who worked with the lead lawyer, Al Pires, to rig claims. They basically, he basically, you know, given that the class action lawyers got a major uh, cut of every $50,000 uh, attempted to farm they signed up, I think tens of thousands of dollars is how much the mm-hmm. class action attorney got. And he found an employee within the USDA who uh, got a major cut by, uh, you know, 
issuing these claims, creating a claim mill within the USDA. I mean, wow. a completely rigged operation working with the guy, the architect of, of Pigford. And she, I hear, wants to leave the country right now because we've been alluding to her. But when we put affidavits on uh, big government that show that her co-workers testified to the FBI that she admitted that she was taking money to file these false claims, she's going to point her finger straight at Alpires, the checks that uh, went to her that falsely <laughs> uh, granted her wealth that she certainly wasn't earning at the FSA loan office. She's now doing p quite well in Pine Bluff. Uh, this is going to take the entire thing down because the architect of the House of Cards, Al Pires, is directly implicated. And I guarantee you he's scared senseless because once Pires goes down, Pigford goes down, and, and politicians left and right, including the President of the United States, are knee-deep in this. Wow. This is this is better than anything we could have seen on 24. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> yeah, Breitbart. I'm obsessed. I, well, you know what? And you do such great... If it wasn't for you, nobody would know about this. No, and this. One of the biggest scandals in our generation would just go right under the door and nobody would know about it. Andrew Breitbart, bigjournalism.com, biggovernment.com, breitbart.tv, big piece. Go and check the Pigford resources. You have to. Thanks so much, Andrew. And I know we'll be talking to you again soon. Thanks, Dana. All right, take care.